Okay, I know, you've seen the thumbnail to this video and you thought, oh, Steve's got a new toy. Well, I might have agreed with you until I took this out of the cardboard box and saw this. This is how the Poweray comes. It's from PowerVision, who are known to, to make really quality equipment, mainly drones for the, for the air, camera gear of all sorts, but, but this is an underwater camera and, and it really is quite impressive. And it just gets more impressive as you uh, open the case. <laughs> A quick look at what's in here. So the drone itself, submarine, whatever you want to call it. I have uh, given it a brief go already. I had some stickers on it when, uh, when it comes, uh, one of which is a sticker here that uh, says, you want to keep this bit dry. It has a little plug that goes on top. So this is where the tether cable, because it, uh, it runs on a, a tethered cable all the time, which is a good thing with a drone. People think that, oh, you know, you can, you can do it like a, a drone in the air, but you can't, of course, because it's through water. So radio waves won't go through. It's always got to be tethered. Uh, but it's a good thing anyway, because it's more easy to get lost with one of these, the orientation of it to know where it is, and the cable will show you where it is. And, uh, and if you really get uh, stuck, you can just sort of gently pull it back in with a cable. But yeah, normally you can, you can bring it back. So absolutely fine. Uh, but yes, with this, with this little joint in here, it says, well, you know, just make sure it's really dry. Don't want to get any water in there. So uh, I always just get a, a tissue, dry that off and leave it in the sun for a bit before I disconnect it and then put the, put the plug back on. But you can see it's, when you feel it, it's, it's really heavy. I mean, you look at it and you think, well, when I first put it out, you think, oh God, that's going to sink like a brick. But you forget how heavy water is of this, you know, this size of a lump of water is, is very heavy. And, and actually this has got very slight positive buoyancy. So if all else failed and it died, it would just float to the surface and you could see it, as I say, and then you could just pull it in. Um, but yeah, it has impellers, one in the middle here, which is where it goes up and down, two at the back, which will push it along and steer it and it's made this one not as sort of something to go along and sort of just hover around it's it's made to, to move it's it's that shape so it can move quite fast up to four knots got a couple of lights at the front and the Zeiss camera which is sort of nicely set back so you're not going to bash into it and scratch it with anything um, and, and you, you can steer it quite nicely as you do that. Not so good in reverse, it'll just sort of come up and, and lose its orientation a bit. So it's not sort of made for that. It's made to just move around and you, you have to sort of get used to using it that way. And it, it's actually uh, a pretty good with fish, it seems. We're gonna have to test this out, but from the reviews I've seen, it says that it actually attracts fish to it. Unlike when you're down and scuba diving, when the fish you know, might wanna swim away from you. Um, with this, they, they seem to be attracted to it. And there's also also, uh, a little thing that fits underneath here, which is a sonar device, which has a blue light, which uh, is supposed to attract fish as well. So yeah, we'd, we'll test that out, but it, it seems to, from other people's reviews, it seems to do that. So that's a drone. Um, this is something that uh, stays on shore. It's the other end of where the cable comes to, so the control box in here, uh, and it has uh, a little rubber strap on it so you put that round something and just push it on so you won't ever lose the whole thing overboard. You make sure that that's that's safely screwed onto something. Uh, obviously it's got uh, a little, this is a little case here. I'll actually have to open the top to show you what this goes with. So this is part of the control unit. Slots in, does up, and it's got the, the fitting so you can either put it out uh, and have it for an iPad, you take this, this little middle bit off if you're doing that, or you just bring it down for a phone if you're, if you're putting a phone in there. Um, and, you know, what you would expect, normal sort of uh, controls that you have with every other drone. And you, as you go through this, you could, you'll see that in the menu, you can change the, what these controls do. So you know, most people, if you're used to flying uh, drones in the air, then you'd, you'd have it in something in the way that's similar to that, which is what I've done. But it's got, you know, lots of controls on here. You can turn the lights on and off, different speed dials here. You've got a high, medium and low. Uh, so we'll try that out. It seems to go well, you know, best on medium. And if you know, really want to zip about, you can put it in high, but you know, it's pretty good. Lasts for about an hour if you're using different um, uh, speed ratings on this. Better than a drone, because if you think about it, you know, the drone is, is trying to keep itself in the air the whole time. So that's why the, the limits of, of time for those things are, are quite short often. You know, 20 minutes, you're lucky to get you know, more than 20 minutes. But for this, easily get an hour. Uh, you might get more than that. So again, I've got to test that out, but that's what they say. This particular model, I think there's a few different models of this that they do, but this one comes with some VR goggles as well. So you could uh, actually put the, the phone in there and, and 
actually use it this way and use gestures, I think, to do it. So I'll, I'll have a play with that. That sounds like a, a bit of fun. Or somebody else can watch it. You can be doing this, but somebody else could actually be just looking at this and seeing it as a sort of a first point of view type look. So yeah, that's all very good. There's Zeiss. So I mean, Zeiss are really good and it's a Zeiss lens in this um, uh, submarine as well in the, in the power ray. So, you know, they're using quality stuff. Uh, it seems, you know, it just seems to be well designed. The, uh, the charging unit as well, as, as, instead of having loads of cables, it's one block uh, with uh, you know, a mains cable that goes in there and then charges everything off the end of it. So you know, that's a nice touch as well because you need to be charging the drone uh, and the handset. Uh, and the last one charges the, the bit that I just showed you, the shore bit here. So that has a little four pin plug on it. So you know, this charges everything just really neatly. Uh, the only bit I, I think they could design a little bit better is this. And I think they are trying because at the moment, let's just get it out, this cable. I have used it, it doesn't, you can see it didn't go back on quite as neatly as it came off. Uh, it came coiled uh, on this and I know from the earlier, say, the earlier review that I saw, it, it was just a coil, it didn't have anything on it, so at least it's got something to, a cotton reel to, to wind it on, but it, it needs to have a hole in it so you can put it on something and it can go out you know I mean because because that's what you're going to do as, as the the drone goes you want this to to roll out so really you'd need a sort of second person there sort of letting it out or just you know take your time reel a bit out and drive it out a little bit more but yeah um i think that you could do better than this and maybe just go and buy uh, a cotton reel type uh, thing for for an extension lead and put it on there that might might be better than this but uh, yeah that's the only thing well design thing that i can find that I particularly don't like the look of. Everything else just looks, you know, really good, really quality. So, yeah, let's get it in the water and have a go. So I've got it connected up. The power vision's just strapped to there. You just press the button and long hold it for, for that to come on. Uh, you've got the lead going into the power ray itself. And the uh, remote here, I've just got my phone on it for the moment. And you can see that's the picture that it's showing, just of the uh, gunnels at the back of the boat there. So the uh, sun's just going down, so uh, we'll have a quick sail of it now and uh, see how it goes, and then we'll do a full test when we get somewhere good to really see what's happening. So I have seen people just chuck this thing into the water, but I'm just going to try and lower it down gently. You don't run the motors with it uh, out of the, the water. There's a, a lock on the uh, remote there to stop that happening. It uh, doesn't do the bearings any good to, to run it out of the water, so I'll just go down the ladder and... Lower it in. So yeah, you've got the end of it to hang on to here. You shouldn't hang on to it by the fin and obviously not by the, by the cable. I'll just plonk her in there. And once it's in, it should be able to unlock it. So there's a little lock on here. You do that and swing it over to its unlocked position. And now, you can see the picture, you can just uh, use the, the controls on here, but if you, if you didn't want to use the, the remote at all, but obviously it's better like this, I think. Uh, so I've got it configured that this one will take it forward and this one will take it down. So if I do that, we dive into the ocean. And it can show me its attitude here. It can show me how deep it is. So I'll have a little practice with all the, uh, the different controls and then come back and, and go through it all piece by piece to see how this thing actually works and, and see what sort of pictures we can get because, uh, I mean, that's the thing. It's all down to how good the camera is and how stable it is and, uh, and, and manoeuvrable to get to places. I mean, you've got a lot of cable here. We've got, I think it's almost 200 feet of cable, so uh, you can get pretty deep. I think it, 30 meters is what they say it, you, know, you should go down to sort of maximum and that's fine. I mean, you're starting losing light after that anyway. And that's why I think this is gonna be good for us. I mean, things where maybe the, the anchor's down too far to, to go down to. I wouldn't want to even dive down to 30 meters with my little tank, to be honest. And you know, this can go down and have a little look. In fact, I'm gonna take it around the front now and have a look at our anchor and uh, see how well that is because I haven't actually swum out on it. And we're at about 15 meters here, so that'd be a good test for it. I found it quite difficult to find the anchor in the weed before the sun went down. I'm going to have to get better at steering so I can follow the anchor chain. Until you're used to it, it's actually quite difficult to do when you can't see the drone and you're just using the camera. 
so I found the best thing to do was to take it to a swimming pool and practice there. You need to work out how fast it turns and how quickly it goes up and down in the different modes. But once you're used to it, it's child's play. I can drive it. You can drive it. I want it to make it go up and we press this. Once you've got used to it in the pool, take it out to sea and have a go there. I've actually screwed in the sonar ball for this test so I can map the sea bottom. It also shows you the temperature. So you see there, the temperature's nine degrees. Certainly don't want to get in on that. That's all the fresh water that's come down off the, off the mountains here. So that's what we're going in. And I know there's lots of fish, I don't know what they are. They might be trout even, but they're, I mean, they're, you can't really get close to them. They try and whiz away, but I'm going to see with this if I can, uh, I can sort of sneak it in close and get the odd shot. I have tried further up the stream, which is sort of where they all are, but there's thin bits of weed that come up from that. And that is one of the, uh, the problems that I found with this is that if you're going somewhere where there's lots of thin, strandy weed, it gets sucked into the, uh, the impellers. So that's not good for it. So I'll come a little bit further down and I'll, I'll just see if I can find the odd fish here. So as you can see, even in the tricky conditions here, I can actually get quite close to the fish and get some good shots. I need to get a little bit more practice at the steering, but I think I should be able to get some good shots. I can get to depths that I can't snorkel to and stay down for a long time too. So I think this is going to be a useful bit of kit in all sorts of conditions. And certainly if you're swimming somewhere with things like sharks and crocodiles, you're going to want one of these.